God. We are gathered here today again to look into some of the doctrines and to enlighten uh, mm -hmm. your and your prayer to help us, Lord, by your spirit so that we will speak the truth alone. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, okay, go on, Paul. Hello, uh, is as the recording? Oh, the recording has started. Yes. Okay. okay. Hello, everyone, and good day, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, good whatever time you are watching this conversation from. Uh, going over the last uh, recording, I, I, I saw a quite number of engagement on the YouTube channel. People are commenting. We love that. Please, if you have any comment, question, you can reach out to uh, the True Christian Faith channel on uh, on on, YouTube, on the YouTube and um, Eda Abatoki and Eda Dideji, we gave back to you. We love that. We love you to ask questions because this actually is going to be a, it's going to be a conversation. We want to reason together. We want to unveil the, the seduction that has been going on for a long time. Basically, some people will think we are mad. Like they always address about a kid that is mad. That how can you, how can this old man be the only one that is right in the midst of uh, big Jews that uh, we have in town? But it's because they don't know the Bible. When, if you know the Bible, you will know that the Bible way is always narrow. It's not about the majority. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, actually, actually, it is good when they do that because that is the only thing to say that the word is penetrating into them, and yeah. uh, so it's good. It's good if anybody makes even yeah. negative comment is is even better than anything because that will expose <clears throat> more of the lies. Go ahead. So last week we we started this conversation on the Aladura uh, theology and the Pentecostalism of today. I started this conversation by referencing what Eba, Eda Abatoki used to say in his video. He will say that after explaining the scriptures vis-a-vis -vis the practice of any preacher at that time, he will say, basically, these men are aladura. I, you know, it, that kept ringing in my mind that he always threw that blanket that they are aladura. So I, that sparked off this conversation in my head. That, okay, let's see. Let's examine what the aladuras believe about uh, the fundamentals of our faith. And let's look at what the Pentecostals believe about the fundamentals of our faith. So last week we began a conversation on salvation. We looked at the Aladura view. The Aladura view of salvation is laced with work-based salvation. They also have that word in their doctrinal statement, salvation in Christ Jesus. But when you probe deeper, like Brother John and Brother Israel said last week, it's work-based. But when you also look at the Pentecostal view of salvation too, it's work-based. So if both of them practice and preaches work-based salvation, so who is right and who is wrong? So today, we want to look at uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit from the Aladura's perspective and from the Pentecostal's perspective. So this job is just to spark off this conversation that, you, that people may ask more questions. Um, some of the videos about Abatoki did on Brother Billy, he said, this man is Pentecostal. And when he said he's Pentecostal, then he began to explain who are, the, who are Pentecostals. He gave about five characteristics of Pentecostalism, but one of it is the doctrine of subsequence. So that we'll be discussing today, the doctrine of subsequence and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When does it happen? Is it something that Holy Spirit wait for a month, wait for a week, wait for a year, wait for 10 years after regenerating a believer, then he waits before he, he baptizes that believer? We want to look at perspectives, Aladura perspective. When I say Aladura, I mean the white garment church theology. Then we will also look at the Pentecostal perspective, which is right and which is wrong. So, Brother John, over to you. Uh, uh, they, uh, do you have any questions for Brother John? Let's hear from the last Yeah, uh, I, I think that uh, if anybody who is watching us asks a kind of question that he wants to ask life, he can just write to us. We will include him so that he can uh, uh, come back to us. So 
I'm just saying that because these are things that are developing. So many people are suffering in all these places. In fact, uh, in uh, you, you <coughs> call them some in Costa, then there are, you know there are so many of them. So I'm just saying this before Brother John starts. Is the uh, uh, John as a former Aladra person? Can you just enlighten us when we say the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Can you enlighten us on how it works? All right. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. Yes, you can. All right. Um, baptism of the Holy Spirit in the Aladura setting, or I would say CNS setting, since I'm from CNS, one of it is uh, by birth. I am not talking about spiritual birth, birth, physical birth. You are born into the church. Uh, like uh, it is our father that founded this church, something like that. By birth, we believe that CNS people have this special traits, special um, uh, attention from God, special calling from God. So because we are born uh, CNS, just like Jewish people believe that uh, Gentiles uh, don't have access to the salvation by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. Okay, so we we also have a similar view. This time, thinking that God has called the CNS church for a particular assignment. So if you are born into that church, you are you you are in a form baptized. Mm -hmm. In a form, you are baptized. Then number two, another criteria to to baptism of the Holy Spirit is to be born by someone who is gifted. Let's assume that your father is a CNS prophet. Automatically, you have a CNS prophetic calling on your head. OK, uh, except if you if you are choosing another life, another way, maybe you want to go into what the people know as a um, secular life or something, then they will believe that you are leaving your gift behind. We believe that all CNS people are gifted. They all have a gift because they are born into that church. Baptism gives birth to a gifting, and that gifting is tied to the CNS calling. So if you are born by a prophet, you are automatically a prophet, in quote. Although it, there will be a stage whereby you will have to be coronated or so, whatever, there will be this oil pouring of oil, that's when you are officially assuming that position of a prophet or prophetess, okay? So if you are born by a prophet, then you are baptized. They don't understand the concept of baptism as um, uh, being added to the body of Christ. No, not at all. That's not what we see baptism as. And our baptism must be with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Every every CNS every CNS serious or devoted born who has this criteria of maybe being born into the church or by a uh, a gifted person would should be able to speak in tongues should be able to speak in tongues we call it uh, Anytime you can speak in tongues, you just receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that gift of the Holy Spirit is not 1 Corinthians 12 kind of gift of the Holy Spirit. It is receiving Holy Spirit himself. Now, the proof that you receive Holy Spirit is that you can speak in tongues. And many times, especially if it is home churches, because we have different sessions. We have home church, campus fellowship. Uh, modern church, churches that are trying to look like what we think Pentecostals are today, that are CNS like that, okay? So uh, whichever category that you, you are in, if it is home church, the local one that old people go to, the one in the villages and some other places like that, if you are going into that, if you are in that setting, then your tongues sound like you are giving this Islamic uh, rendering, this ayah, when you sing, and uh, um, Muslim people, whenever they sing, there's a way they sound like Arabic tongue. So it sounds like it. And if you pay attention very well to that tongue, 
I'm talking about those who are baptized. This is how they express themselves. If you pay attention to that tongue, you will be hearing something like ila, ila, la, ila, something like that. They may not say la, ila, ila, la, but you will, it will almost sound like someone who just converted from Islam to uh, Christianity in quotes. So it's always sounding like that. But then they call, when you are using it to sing, they call it uh, aya, umfa, aya. Uh, in the Pentecostal setting, they call it chanting. You chant in the spirit. When you use the speaking in tongues to sing, you are chanting in the spirit. Okay? So, but CNS, we call it uh, Aya. It's a, almost the same thing. It's just that the way they say it is quite unique. Like, it's unique. It's, it looks so much like Islamic and uh, Arabic song when they are maybe trying to worship or maybe bowing to Allah, something like that or when they are reciting some verses in Quran, the way they sound when they sing. Okay, that is how it looks like. Okay, so, and they pay attention to this tongue. Tongue, majorly, is what we see. We know that you are born into CNS. That means you have a more possibility for uh, baptism, like you are qualified for baptism. Number two, someone who is gifted. And if, that, if you don't have anybody that is gifted, then you have to be very serious to log in. But if your parents already have this man to this influence in CNS, then it will be easier for the son to just continue the trend that the father leave off. Okay? But if you are not born into CNS, you have to labor, work towards it. And there is nothing like... I, they preach the gospel to me, I get born again, or, or my life changed, God changed my life. No. The, the only thing we know is that, okay, you start being serious with your life. So, because you are serious with your life, you are interested in the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so then you, when you know how to speak in tongues, then you are baptized. That's what we call baptism and the way you okay. you receive the holy uh, spirit uh, okay. okay i think uh, brother Obatoki is about to ask a question are you not at all i can, I can see all. you moving okay so mm -hmm. what we are saying in in effect is that by birth hereditary uh and then evidence of speaking in tongue so uh it doesn't matter that the person has repented of his sin. It, well, he, first of all, realize that he is a sinner, that he is not able to save himself, and he now goes to God and uh, uh, pray that God will save him. So there's no evidence like that. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. uh, but I'm not well, sure he has finished. I'm not sure he has finished. Uh, yes, I'm not sure he has finished. I'm, I'm only trying to, so that we know a definite thing that we, because what I've gotten here, here is uh, by birth, uh, it's just like Islam, you are born a Muslim, you are born by a Muslim parent, you are automatically, so every, what I'm trying to establish is that uh, there is nothing that says that he has repented of sin, there's nothing that says that uh, uh, he's been born again, that's, that's what I'm trying to establish so, by asking uh, those questions. So, so in that conversation, Sin is absent, gospel is absent, hearing and believing is absent. We absent. see hereditary baptism uh, in the Holy Spirit as uh, uh, hereditary. We also see it can be learned because if you have an identical syllabic language, that means that means it can be learned. So yeah, someone yeah. can teach you about the uh, evidence of the Holy Spirit can be taught. So. Yeah. Bible is absent, gospel is absent, sin is absent, it's hereditary, it can be learned. And uh, what again? It can be transferred. Yeah. From yeah. one to another, it can be transferred. I think that's what, that's what that's that's even what what I'm about to say. The way you get okay. it, the way you get the tongue, um, it's done during uh, uh, using different methods. Some, mm. To some people, it is one, uh, they've been praying about it, they've been praying for it for long. And uh, one day, suddenly, they cry, they pray about it, and they fall asleep. And from the dream, one angel appeared to the person 
and ask the person to say this label. It says it from the sleep to life, like waking up with it, and suddenly it gets it. So some others, it is by going to a prophet who has that ability. So the prophet will tell him some things to do. He will have to fast for three days or seven days. Uh, most And those fasting are always a weird one. Um, it will be white fasting, no oil, no no salt. When he wants to break, uh, it's, uh, you, I want to believe we are familiar with uh, white fasting. Nothing, no. nothing. <laughs> Don't assume we are. OK, OK. All right. Oil. <laughs> Uh, no oil in your food when you want to break your fast. No oil, no salt, no no processed food like biscuits or whatever. You can't take something like that. It must be natural. You take a natural. In fact, when you take, uh, if it is gari, you want to take. There must not be sugar, no uh, kuli kuli or whatever. Uh, yes, <laughs> those are the. <laughs> They will have to make a list for you so that you don't mistakenly take it. No milk, nothing like that. So, and that is one. And it, it can be three days, it can be seven days. It depends on whoever is leading you into it. Okay, then the person will have to convince him that don't worry, God is ready to do it if you are ready to receive it. But these are the things you have to do. If you break it, then it won't happen. So, um, during that, because we have two um, aladuras, two groups. There are local ones that are very obvious, and there are modern ones. The modern ones see the local ones as those who are not born again, who don't know the truth. So the local one, also, they can use like this garden that they tie around their waist. They will, they can tie it. I will tie my garden with your own garden, with another person's garden, like that, like that. It will now form a kind of circle something especially if we all want to receive the baptism of the holy spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues that's what the modern setting will say but that's also what we believed in the local setting we need to speak in tongues as a proof that we have received the baptism of the holy spirit so when we tie this gadu and we we you know stay beside each other like a kind of circular form we, we can hold hands or the gadu is also a connection so but one of us who are standing around like that one of us must be able to speak that tongue because it is from that person we will transfer that baptism or gift to other people who cannot so then they can use different means it can be a song we will be repeating the song repetition of that song you'll be repeating it repeating it until you lose consciousness and something will just come out of your mouth. Since you are anticipating, you are ready for it, you want to say something, then anything that comes to your mouth, let's assume you are say, singing that song, okay? Um, let's say Jesus, for example, a good thing, Jesus. Jesus, 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 not mindful of what I am saying, then the person who can speak the tongue will be encouraging you. Yes, that is it. That is it. You are already saying it. Continue. That is it. So in case if I want to doubt that this is, am I saying the right thing? The person who can speak in tongues is telling me that, yes, that is it. Don't worry. Continue. Yes, God is already on you. Yes, I can see the power on you. Continue. Continue. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Something like that. Then the, the the person just goes like that. Then after that, if they all or a few of them receive it, it depends. Okay, they um they will tell those who have received it that they should not give up and that Holy Spirit will not hold your mouth to speak. Just continue that thing that you are saying. Don't worry. Continue with it. That is the tongue. The same thing goes with um, uh, interpretation and some other gifts in like that. So yes, but for modern setting, it's it's the same thing, but a little bit different. They may not tie the gadu like the local one. Local one looks more fetish. Sometimes they they can bring three stone, they can bring uh, oil, 
they can be pouring oil, they can be doing some specific thing or using a kind of um, perfume. There's this special perfume that they can they will sprinkle on people and those people will be shaking because that perfume can be pepperish. Can, so there will be a kind of reaction. It is very cold and some other things like that. So you can give a reaction and you will follow the reaction. That person can fall down, be rolling on the floor. You don't catch them with that. So uh, <laughs> but for modern setting, Modern setting is is a little bit different. They may not use oil, perfume, or whatever, but it is still the same process. They will pray on people. They do more of laying of hand to receive the gift of speaking in tongues because tongue is the target, not interpretation, not prophecy, not nothing. It is tongue, only tongue. Tongue is a proof that Holy Spirit is on you because we had it in Acts chapter two. That's the idea. So you can assess it, and then modern setting now try to make it simpler for people that you can do it personally. If you don't have enough faith, then you need the help of someone who has it. In fact, in some modern settings, they will, they will tell you that if you know that you can speak in tongues, raise your hand. So they will all raise their hands, those who can. And they will say, oh yeah, look at the person by your li right or left. If the person is not raising his hand, push him out. So they will push those people out, and those people will, um, some prayer warriors, they call them Afadura Jagun, using prayer to fight. Afadura Jagun, those, uh, those people will hold them, hold their hand in hand, and they will be praying, they will be doing it, shaking them, so that they will get this thing by fire, by force. I even remember a friend of mine, that was forced to speak this tongue, he couldn't. He studied linguistics like me. So he just started using the uh, French French uh, language that they taught them <laughs> in school. And the man who was leading him said, yes, 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 that's it, that's it. And uh, they believe that he has received it because he was tired. He wanted to speak it, but it wasn't coming. So he just swapped to French that he was taught in school. And uh, they had uh, the let him go and they believed that he had received the gift of tongues so yes that's how they receive it thank you wow thank you brother john <laughs> now i see the reason why eba always call this uh, pentecostalism aladura uh, before i step aside for uh, 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 eda to give a comment um i looked at what he has itemized it may it may be extreme in the white garment but something is fundamental principles and techniques are used to penetrate the spirit that some set of people may receive the gift of the spirit so i see so what i see here is satan gave this sect a kind of christianity that is outside of the scriptures so it's called imaginative worship they just they are inventing something and they are stamping the name of God upon it, but it's, the origin is not from the Bible. I know why I'm saying that. If that is the definition of what they are doing, they claim to be a kind of Christian who is practicing a kind of Christianity that is not according to the scriptures. If that is the definition, if that is what they have done, because all the, you have explained here are techniques that came out of human mind, human imagination, human reasoning. If I take that same principle and place it on what I learned when I was in Winners, let me explain our own, our own perspective. It may not be this extreme, but look at it. You hear a convincing word from a preacher who will entice you to believe in the Lord Jesus. Of course, uh, the Lord Jesus in, in comma. Then you come out and believe in that Lord Jesus on a Sunday. On this Sunday, yes, you come out having had the enticing words, what Christ can do for you. Sin absent, repentance absent, but enticing words. Then when you come out, you have your names written. Then you go home. By the end of that month, an announcement will come that all of you that give your life to Christ this month, wait next Sunday for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And everybody whose name was written, this month we we'll wait next sunday 
for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And how does the baptism of the Holy Spirit go? Someone will come and give an, a, a, a short exhortation about the importance and necessity of the Holy Spirit. Then it will lead you all to pray after him and has the Holy Spirit to come. Then when he starts that prayer, he would say, whatever comes to your mouth, whatever comes to your heart, of course, he will start leading. Then speak it out. As he starts to speak the tongues, he has told you, whatever comes to your mouth, speak it out. There, yeah, they are taking it there. He's having it there. Holy Spirit is coming there. So people began to speak it because I also did the same. You know, it was done on me too. And I began to say, whatever comes to my mouth. I never had the gospel, never repented of my sin, never believed the Lord Jesus, never understood what it means to place my faith in the finished work of Christ. But I was led to say whatever comes to my mind. And I said, whatever comes to my mind, then that is it. It has come. Holy Spirit has come. But it came days. That's why they call it subsequence. Subsequent things that happened. Subsequent things that happened after conversion. Now, from what I have said, it looks like it's different from the CNS, but it's not. It's an experience that is not according to the Bible. It's an experience that the Bible did not describe. It's also human imagination. So the human imagination of the Aladura came in a perspective. It looks crude. The Pentecostal perspective also came in a more refined uh, uh, tone. So when, I now see when Baba say, Baba often say that these people are Aladura, because why, why the Aladura were, when the Aladura was still invoked, we were very young then. So Baba, now I see why you say those things you say now, because you know them. You know what they practice, how the version of Christianity they practice that is not according to the Bible. So also, when you look at the Pentecostalism of today, the version of Christianity they practice is also according to either imagination, what the man of God says, what the geo brings, what the churches, what the church have, uh, have agreed upon. So uh, I, will, uh, I will stop here and um, there's still much to, to, to look at into uh, about in, in this topic, but I will stop for Ed, Ed Abatoki to please uh, give us um, uh, your own point of view, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I hope my, I hope it's not really echoing. Yeah, I hope okay. it's it good. Like it's echoing. It's echoing. No, it's not echoing. Okay. It's echoing. Don't worry. Go so on. Let's see. If it's... Okay. okay. Um, yes, for the sake of uh, people who may not uh, uh, stay long uh, with the with the video. Uh, I want to say just a few things straight away uh, that um, this is a, we are not in the we are not just doing panel discussion uh, of something that anybody could feel it is flimsy. The discussion we are having is life and death. Uh, please, I want to tell you that I'm not receiving money. <laughs> uh, on this work, uh, generally speaking, I'm financing myself basically. Once in a while, some Christians uh, bring some, but and I thank them for that. But the majority of the of the work here is funded by me and my children. Uh, so nobody, yeah, I want people to get it very clearly that there's a reason for this work to be done, and I'm not complaining. If I make uh, if I make hundred million today, I'll put it on the job because very shortly that money will have no value again to me. I I I want to therefore if you have if anybody is opportune to listen to this, I want him to pay attention for his own sake because eternity is very close. That is closer than most people think. Eternity is closer than most people think. Now, the, one of the first things I want to say is that to get into demon worship is not as difficult as people think it is. To get into demon worship, to get into what they call doctrines of demons and demon worship is not difficult. It's not that. It's, 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 it's factually everywhere around us. All you need to do is just escape from the narrow gates and the narrow road. 
and just that any form of worship. Years ago, I learned that you can start satanic worship in any form. A human being can start satanic worship in any form. At the beginning, it will look like a joke. It will look like the person is joking. But after some time, if he's consistent in what he is doing, Satan will reach out to him. People should get that one very clearly. It does not take much to get contact with Satan. It doesn't. All you need to do is just turn your back against what you have in the Bible. Just turn your back against what you can see written in the Bible and call it worship. Call it worship. Call it you are trying to make a contact with spirits. You will. It may not happen. It may not happen immediately, but generally within some time, uh, it will happen. So, the summary of what I'm saying is this: much of what Bra um, John described is, for want of better things to call it, we will call it Aladura. But the actual thing is that it is demonic worship. That is the actual name in actual fact. It is demon worship. Let me repeat what I said. Let me, if I, maybe I'll be a little clearer. If you, if you are involved in any form of worship, if a human being is involved in any form of worship, and that worship is not as you find on the pages of the New Testament, not, not the pages of the Bible, because some aspects of the worship of the Bible have been overtaken by the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. If any form of worship is done by any person or group of person, and it is not, according to what you have in the New Testament, it is worship of demons. So what, what uh, John had described in so much detail is worship of demons. Because Every worship must be received by somebody. Every worship is being received by a spiritual being. The issue is, who is the spiritual being that you are worshiping? You know what? You cannot, you, no human being can dictate how God will be worshipped to him. Mm -hmm. That's correct. None. So, Every time a human being tries to think that they can formulate how God can be worshipped, is worshipping a demon. It's as simple as that. People should get that one very, very clearly. That is why it is very, very, it is not harmless. People think it is harmless to go to a place where, where they do worship, but not the true thing that you can see on the pages of the Bible. They think it's, uh, it's harmless. There is nothing harmless in demonic worship. There is nothing harmless in demon worship. Nothing. If you don't know, you don't know. But the fact that you don't know that a snake is poisonous will not save you from its bite. And demons are, demons are much, much, much more poisonous than any snake a human being can see with his eyes. So it's important that we get, whoever will get this, before I go to any other, and just get it very clearly. The issue we are dealing with. Yeah. Uh, 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 can I just pursue this? Please. You have said so. You have said so many important things. And the fact of the case is that the greatest part of it is who are you worshiping? Who are you worshiping? And I, I just you know I like to go into Bible, and I can. Look into Jesus' discourse with uh, the woman of Samaria, who was explaining. You just said something that any kind of any form of worship that is not in sync with that of the New Testament, yeah, it's not it's not really acceptable. So, if you don't mind, sir, can I just open John chapter four and we read a few mm -hmm. verses in it, so that okay, we will. Mm -hmm. Just read a few verses in that okay. in that John chapter four, which I've opened, okay. and I want to I want to uh, 
static from here yeah, because the woman said to him from verse 19 i perceive that you are a prophet and i want you to really note this our father worship on this mountain and you just say that in jerusalem is the place where we ought to worship talking about worship now and yeah. jesus said to her woman and i need us to pay particular attention to all these things the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in jerusalem worship the father we need to you you say something which is so striking that every worship must be received by another being and jesus is now saying that forget any other worship it is worship to the father that is very important worship to the father and in verse 22 sir he now spoke to him straight away uh, to us straight away because the woman claimed that our fathers worship on this mountain uh paul described it as this is the uh, uh, is thing that is being uh taught out by men which is correct now jesus said in verse 22 you worship what you do not know we know what we worship for salvation is of the jew but the hour is coming you see look at he just said for salvation is for the jew and the woman accused them that the jews you Jews say that it is in jerusalem we should worship and i want us to pay particular attention to this verse 23 say the why hour is coming and now is when the true worshiper will worship the father in spirit and truth for the father is seeking such uh, seeking such to worship him god is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth so it was god, uh, christ was telling him that the hour is coming not yet this hour when we are talking but the hour after the resurrection is coming when the true worshiper will not need a mountain nor a place nor anywhere to worship but there is a very good thing so sir i just because of the way you mentioned worship people will really need to understand that you say something which is correct the worship on the mountain is always done in the old testament the worship in jerusalem is done by the jews in in the old testament and part of the new testament but when this hour come in verse 24 it says god is spirit and no 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 in verse 23 he said but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers which means the worshipers that are not true true worshipers we worship the father in spirit and in truth for the father is seeking such to worship him you can continue sir i just needed to thank you thank you thank you for that uh, for the, for that contribution uh, in verse 22 that you have uh, kept with us the beginning of the the, the the first phrase is that you worship what you do not know you worship what you do not know what uh, what john described as uh, the <laughs> the metals and the evidences of uh, or baptism of the Holy Spirit or, 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 or the coming of the Holy Spirit is basically summarized by what you have in verse 22. They worship what they do not know. The Aladuras worship what they do not know. It is, they, when we call them Aladura, we are using fancy words. They are demon worshippers. They, they are demon worshippers. In the, spirit, in, the, in the spiritual realm, there's no, no, di no difference between them and shamans. It, it, let me say that very clearly. There's no difference between an Aladura and shamans. They are the same. The God of the universe, nobody can dictate to him how he is to be approached. The only route of approaching him is the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Nobody can specify that this is how we do it. This is how I, I want to do it. Every such specification is a display of rebellion against him. Can so, you repeat that? Sir? Yes. Every, every time anybody steps out presuming to worship God in the way that either he or elders or bishops or apostles or prophets or any other human being specified, different from what you have in the New Testament, every such is a worship of demons. And every, every worship of demon is actually an affirmation of rebellion against the Almighty. These people, these people, what they are doing, what, what they are doing is that they are making effort to approach to God mm -hmm. otherwise than through Christ. That is actually a summary of what they are doing. They are, they are making effort to, to approach to God otherwise than through Christ. And okay. every effort made to approach to God otherwise than through Christ it is a display of rebellion against God. Mm. It's actually a way of saying that the, the blood of Christ is, ha, has no value to you. And it's actually a gross respect, disrespect to God the Father. Sir, I have, a who actually... for you. I have a question okay, for you. Sir. And this question okay, will sir. bring this conversation home to the Pentecostals. Okay. In the case of Jalajura, they are way extreme. They are way on the extreme side. In this case of the Pentecostal, they have 80%, 80% of their practice, you can trace it to the scriptures, and 20% of their practice, you can trace it to the Jalajura. So my question is, what if in some cases, in some part of our worship, we believe the scriptures, we follow the scriptures, and we had just 20 percent of what ah, is not in the, what is not scriptural 20 percent is a little too much sir 20 percent is a little too much to destroy it uh 0. 0.0001 percent is enough 20 percent is far too much yeah i'm asking because, this question sir because uh, you say that because there's no place today you know because of their their large were crude they are not as smart as the new guys of today there's no place today you will find someone outrightly turning against the Bible. They pick some things, they quote the scriptures, they at times, like just like a dead clock. A dead clock can be right twice a day. So at times, most of the times, they get it right. But when you look closely, a lot of their practices is shamanism. The so, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. And the ones they got right override the, the wrong no, ones. Can you say that they seem to have gotten it right because they don't get it right? You see, yes. you have to be very, very factual. They, it seems because they, you you said something where you are uh, making, I'm, I'm talking to Paul now, where you are talking about the um, the way the people tell you. They said they will first of all give you some enticing word. And when they give you that enticing word, that is the first thing that will make you body because I think the only, the only way we can do this is to bring what is the real uh, way of the, uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, who mm -hmm. can get it, how. That is what we need to do in that so uh, if you don't mind uh, let let me direct it back to uh, uh, brother i think uh, john has just given you galatian <laughs> a little no, no, bit that's, that's actually yeah thank you that's john act, that's actually so you see what uh, what what uh, john brought up in in the flash is actually what christ said a little living Living the whole long. Oh, oh, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no matter how little, how yes. little. Uh, please, uh, when you are producing this uh, video, can you just yes, put sir. 
that digestion and let it be there. So because okay, people sir. need to really know the the biblical answer. Uh, okay, to what uh, we are maybe doing. maybe maybe you should remove the share screen. Okay. So I will do So that. one more question because I like this question. Okay, just it, please, it, let me please before you go from that, let me say something. Okay, sir. Uh, for the benefit of people generally speaking, um, we quoted Christ saying that a little a little living lives the whole long. When it comes to false doctrine, you see the issue is. Uh, as I, I'm repeating myself, no human being can specify to God how God will be worshipped. None. None. And you cannot divine how God will be worshipped. You cannot. You, know, you cannot. Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. If if it is not if it's not the road by which you are approaching to God, by which anybody is approaching to God, if Christ is not the road, the only road. Are you with me? There's somebody at the end of that road, mm. and the person at the end of the of that road has juniors that are escorting you along that road. The person mm. at the end of that of that road is Satan. Mm. And it is demon that I is cutting you. you. You see, human beings get inspiration. They get spiritual inspiration about what, how they will worship or what they will do and the rest of it. And they do not know that much of the inspiration, they are not from God. Much of what uh, John was saying, virtually everything he was saying, uh, you, you, you approach a prophet, if you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, or you approach the leader, the leader said you should do fasting. And it was, uh, he gave us what they call uh, white fasting. <laughs> you understand? Uh, that that uh, as you are doing the fasting, uh, oil must not touch your mouth, sugar must not touch your mouth, um, and milk must not touch your mouth, salt must, must, not, must not touch your mouth. Dietary restriction. Yes, yes. Those are the, the 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 young man is basically describing the gods of my father's house. Baba la wo mo wa bebe. Telling you, yes. <laughs> so yes, you see, when people get this thing, when people get it, when you get when you when you hear that people are doing white fasting. You understand? And you don't get it that human beings cannot specify how God will be, must be approached. That is that is a display of a rebellion, of, of a continued rebellion against God. And you hear of white fasting. Oh, you say, oh, it's just ordinary fasting. Or when you hear of uh, of uh, of my uncle, Adeboye, saying that, well, we are going to have 60-day fast. You understand? People, people think that it is not harmless. You, you see, some you people, you know the Bible. You can tell me where in the Bible God said that you must do 60 day fast twice a twice a year, at the beginning of the year and at the end of the year, for the purposes of approaching to Him. None. Do you have any such thing? None. If if, if so. Jesus Christ. In his ignorance, did not remember to tell his followers that they must do 60 day fast. But you know, he has incorporated it into his own mode and form of worship. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Then you have to ask the question who inspires in Okadiboye? I know some people might be uncomfortable. Mentioning the name, but I want to say that I have no apology because he cannot take me to court. If he does, he will lose <laughs> because this is something that he does openly. 
and somebody must be around to challenge him openly so that he will specify from what part of the Bible he's getting his inspiration from. A human being cannot specify to God how God must be worshipped. If you try, you'll be worshipping demons. So any, everybody that goes to, uh, what do you call it, redeem, goes there to worship demons. That answers a lot of questions. Sir, that I'm takes me... That takes me to the next question I wanted to ask. I didn't ask, and you let, you went there. So, which means, what if they go to redeem, to worship in ignorance? They didn't know. Is there ignorance in false worship? I don't know. Yes, yes, yes. yes. You know the other time. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. I came from the farm. I came from the farm. I grew up in the farm <laughs> before, before, the, before, the, the, before they realized I wasn't very good as a farmer. Uh, if in ignorance... You pick up a cobra. <laughs> the cobra, out of ignorance, will strike your hand. <laughs> okay. So there's yeah. no ignorance in false worship. All right. Uh, um, um, let's so do let's this. Start off. <laughs> let's do this. We started from the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Uh, and of, but okay, can you tell us how a believer Yes. We get that. A believer. We get the baptism of the Spirit. Or what is the promise? We are, which part of the Bible do we need to go to get to read so that people can really see? Because we are, we are claiming that it is in the Bible what we are talking about. This is the Holy, uh, uh, New Testament uh, practice. So, number one, how do a person get saved, get the salvation, or mm -hmm. born again? And how do they get the Holy Spirit? If we have said that they first of all get the, after hearing some enticing word, uh, they get uh, saved, and then they, I say scheduled, mm -hmm. because all, all these uh, things are scheduled time for the Spirit to come. That is, human being will now decide when that Spirit will come. Mm -hmm. So. Let's okay. get okay. the let's get the original. Okay. Yes, so that yes, yes. yes. Come sir, you are the one that will give all the the, the Bible first. I'll give you the words, and I know you are going to give us the Bible first. <laughs> yes. Because they asked they asked John, and John told them, "Look, I baptize you with water. There is one standing among you whom you do not know. No, it's greater than me." Is the one that, that baptizes the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's only one person that baptizes with the Holy Spirit. Yes. You see, sir, there, there's a, I know you are going to get the, the passage for us. I'm, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it now. Yes. In, now. The, book John, in the book of John, I think, in the book of Mark and Matthew. That, John Matthew Christ Christ is the one that baptizes with the Holy Spirit. I won't extend it to go to the other side and with fire because they, they, because that's another <laughs> area of error that these people have started teaching. Yes, that Christ is the one that baptizes with the Holy Spirit. So I, I'm trying to use that that passage to answer the question, sir. That the baptism of the Holy Spirit is done by Christ to true Christians. It's done by Christ. The baptism of the Holy Spirit has a lot of synonyms in the Bible. It has a lot of synonyms. One of the synonyms is being born again. That's Matthew, uh, Matthew 3, 11. Okay, so that's what I'm uh -huh. Yeah, we open it and then give it, give it you to us. You open it for the sake of people, and is, mm. you, you should call them out for their own sake too. Let them open their own Bible and read themselves. So that they get that we are not just talking out of our head. This is what is in the book of the Almighty. What is called baptism of the Holy Spirit is the same thing as being born again. In the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 9, the last phrase okay, let, there. Let me give them this, sir. So that, okay, uh, sir. Uh, 
So, okay. indeed, you buy, indeed, I indeed baptize you with the with waters unto repentance. But he who is coming, okay, he who is coming uh, after me is mightier than I, who sander I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize yes. you with the Holy Spirit. And then you uh, I, the Holy Spirit, yes. Go ahead, sir, if you want to speak. No, that's all right. I'm just saying that. Uh, Yes, the person that baptizes human being with the Holy Spirit is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the person that baptizes people with the Holy Spirit. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit, let me repeat, please, for the sake of anybody who cares. Yes, you, you can yes, you can open the uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 9, sir. The last phrase. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is the same. Another synonym for it is being born again. It's being born again. In Romans chapter 8, verse 9, uh, verse 9, the last part. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he's not his. If, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he's not his. If, any, if anybody thinks that it could be born again, and there will be uh, a gap between the time he is born again and the time when the Holy Spirit comes on him, and that will come through another set of processes or procedures or, or, uh, or what do you call it? Or, um, Te techniques. Techniques or ministration something before it is done if anybody thinks that is possible romans chapter 8 the last part of it says that if you do not have the spirit of god you are not his own you are not his so there's no gap there's no gap really people and people mistake series of things in the bible to, to as evidences of teaching error let me let me give you people a little history, sir. Please, please forgive me. Much of this uh, baptism of the uh, Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues started with uh, the founders of uh, Methodism. It, it was around that time the thing started, around 1760, 1780. For more than 1,700 years of Christianity, it was not taught. Millions of Christians have given their lives as martyrs in Christianity. They never thought and they never believed the idea that you can be born again without having the Holy Spirit. There, there's no such thing. There, there is no history of it that generally goes beyond 1750 or so. When, when the founders of Methodism came, came into the picture. The fact that they believe those things does not mean it is true because there's no Bible passage, really. There's no Bible passage for it. Yes, of course, they, 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 as time, they, they, talk, they, they talk about uh, Acts chapter 19, Acts chapter 8, and all those kind of things. Each of them with its own peculiarities. The 3,000 people that were born again on the day of Pentecost, when did they receive the Holy Spirit? <laughs> Those that, the 4,000 that were born again a few days later, when Peter and John healed the cripple by the by the by the gate of the of the temple, the beautiful gate. Yes, yeah, the beautiful gate. When did they receive the uh, Holy Spirit? What, what subsequent service was ever held for them to receive the Holy Spirit? The Bible never told us because such service never held. What the Bible says was that God was packing into the church every day those that were being saved. God was adding into the church. 
those that were being saved. So what we have in the what we have in the Bible is that the day the day a human being truly turns to the Lord Jesus Christ, that's the day he's born again. And that day, from that day, what the Bible says is that the person begins to be sealed with the Spirit of God. Yes, as we have it in uh, Ephesians chapter one, verse thirteen and forty. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. In, yes. You also trusted. You see, that is that is the that is the word. You need to trust God to okay. understand that you are a sinner, and then you you repent of your sin, go to Him in prayer, whichever lie down, roll up, whatever you want to do. Neither after you add the word of truth. Not enticing word, as my brother said they had. <laughs> and he said that word of truth is the gospel of your salvation. salvation. Yeah. In whom also, having believed, you are sealed it is, with the Holy it's Spirit. Not, it's not be, can you show it? Can you show it on the screen? Are you not seeing it? No. No, I'm not, I'm not seeing it. Though. Or maybe it's ah. only me. Efficiency one. No, it's not there. It's not on the screen. It's not ah, on the screen. Okay. Yes, ah, sorry. I thought it's in the screen. On the screen. All right, now. Yeah, now is there. Okay. Yes. Oh. Yes. Please, yeah. if you don't mind, can you read it so that uh, yes. Say, in him. If you don't mind, can you, you come also... again, sir? Yes, I'm reading. Are you hearing me? Yes. Yes. In him, you also trusted after you had the word of truth. And what not enticing word? That word of truth is the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Is, is that what you want, sir? Absolutely, yeah. sir. Yeah. That's yeah. what that's yeah. the Bible. Yeah, let's hear from Brother John. Then uh Yes, okay, yes. Sorry, John, please. All right. Um, thank you very much for that for that um, um, Bible verse. And um, this same Romans chapter eight verse nine. Um, we we in, we in Cianes or those in Cianes now have left. Those in Cianes they, they don't they probably don't see this verse. They don't use it because it's actually an action word to be in the spirit. It is not a status of a Christian to be in the spirit in CNS. It is to do something. So I will quickly read the last part. Uh, anyone who does not have the spirit, okay, it says, however, from the beginning, and verse 9, 8, 9. However, you are not in the spirit, but uh, you are not in the flesh, rather, but in spirit. If, in fact, the spirit of God dwells in you. So this one is saying that all Christians are not in flesh. All true believers are not in flesh, but in spirit. If the spirit is in them, anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. So you don't have the spirit of Christ when you are not in spirit, when you are in flesh, when you are not born again, when you are not a Christian. So that's, it's clear. But um, they use this word, let's be in the spirit. And depend, the modern CNS and the, the local ones, they both use this. They will say, let's be in the spirit. And what they mean is, Pay attention. Pay attention to what we are doing. It could mean pay attention or close your eyes, If, of course, if you are praying. Uh, if we are having a kind of congregational prayer and they say, Let, uh, what? let's be in spirit. Uh, what that means is close your eyes and pay attention. Another thing that it means is to tune into the spirit as if you, you are tuning a radio, radio frequency. You tune into the spirit, like logging in and logging out. If you have an uh, a, an account, you log in into the account by, you know, pressing some particular code. You just log in. So you tune into the spirit. They also sorry, use that word. Sorry, sorry, sir. Sorry, yes. Mr. Mr. Sorry, winner. All right. Please. Sorry. Yes, sorry sir. for being in. Please. I want to make a few more comments on what you said earlier. There are, there are things that you said earlier that we must make comments on. Sorry, please. No, no, no. Some of these things, this one you might need to repeat uh, this new um, Some of the things that John described earlier, 
like gadu tying, like tying of gadu, uh, forming saku, like laying on of hands, like uh, like uh, repeating mantra. Even if the mantra is Jesus, 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 holy, holy, all those kind of things, they are mantra. Hmm. Every one of these things, every one of them, if you go to real shamans, you will meet them there. See them there. Everyone, everyone, forming circle. You, you, there, so there was a time that they brought it into the church. The idea that you, they, they, so there's something they call prayer, prayer circle and, or prayer chain. <laughs> yes. No. What the Bible says is that the 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 fervent prayer of one righteous person has failed much. It, 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 all all of these things are. They, they they actually borrow worship forms and worship pra practices right from Kovuns, and they brought them into the church. Yeah, that's why they talk about co corporate prayer, corporate whatever. Yes, 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 sir. All of those things are right from the Kovuns of witches and wizards. He mentioned he mentioned the prayer warriors as well. Who are they fighting? Prayer is. And Petition. Well, well, that, that's that's a very logical question. Prayer is so, petition. The idea of petition. tying, tying gadus, the idea of forming circles, the idea of uh, of putting three stones in the middle. <laughs> the, you understand? The idea of uh, repeating words. The idea. Those are incantations. The idea of laying hands. I hope you yes, get it. Transference of the uh, uh, demons. It's, transfer it's transference of, of spirit. Shakti Pad. Yes, the spirit, Shakti Pad. The spirit of God cannot be transferred through the touch of a human being. <laughs> it's God. Oh, but you, are, you have never had it that you tap out of the anointing that is in me. That's what uh, they do. Uh, okay, then. We are, we, Sorry. We are telling you that there's nothing like that. If you get any spirit from anybody yes it is transparent of an evil spirit to you maybe Paul it's evil something. spirit it's evil spirit it's evil spirit yes paul you paul hey, you, you 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 reference something today and um um a scripture is going to help us to also bring this thing to a, a logical conclusion okay. you said uh, the word baptism of the Holy Spirit is basically the same thing as being born again. As it, it baptism is. of the Holy Spirit is basically the same thing as being born again. Now, someone asked yes. Jesus, Nicodemus asked Jesus, when he came to Jesus, Jesus, he asked him, you know, about being born again. Then Jesus said, Jesus answered him, John 3, 3, Truly, truly, I say unto you, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him this is verse 4 how can a man be born again so if you say being born again and the baptism of the spirit basically mean the same so what nicodemus is asking is how can i receive the baptism of the holy spirit how can i oh, yes. be born again oh, yes. so oh, yes. That's what he asked yes. the question so let's get the answer verses 5 jesus answered truly truly i say to you unless one is born of the water and of the spirit it changed in verses 3 Jesus called it born again. In verses 5, he called it being born of the Spirit. He changed the same word. But <laughs> he, said, he said being born again. Over yeah, here, he said being born of the Spirit. Now, yeah. verses Thank 6 you. says, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. Verses 8, comparison. Jesus does that a lot. He uses what people understand to explain spiritual meaning. He used wind. He said, the wind blows where it reaches. Now, he said, you hear the sound, but you do not know where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit, which means we cannot influence it from our own human no. perspective. No, no, we no. Cannot 
control it from our own human perspective. It's mm. God's sovereign act. No one can induce the spirit because it's like the wind. You can't control the wind. You, you don't know the direction of the wind. But something is common or something is characteristic, which was what you said last week. You said a man who is born again. You Even that man will not know how his life will be rearranged. The sin you so love, you start to hate. So Jesus said, you don't know where the wind is going or where it's coming. But he said you hear the sound, which means if truly you are born again, you are born of the Spirit, you will not even know when. Some people cannot, don't know the day. You don't, you don't know the hour. You may not know and you may know. It depends on if God wants you to know. So, so it cannot be scheduled like uh, my whole church. It can't be scheduled the day for the baptism of the Holy Spirit because it's like the wind. You can't touch it. You can't grab it. You can't influence it. You can't control it. But the man who is born again, there will be something that will be characteristic of him. There are fellow believers we know. Truly, this man has met the Lord Jesus. And it has nothing to do with tongues, like what Brother John have said. It has nothing to no. do with matters, like spiritual gift. It has mm. all to do with a changed life. Jesus Correct. comes into our life the way we are, but he does not leave us the way we are. That is true. The truth about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, like you have said today. And thank you so much for, for this opportunity, for what this conversation. Maybe someone out there will be helped. I know you have something to add, but I want to throw this out. In a place where there's emphasis on the on the Holy Spirit, but the gospel is absent, what is the danger? In a place where there's emphasis, over emphasis on the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, but there's no gospel. Uh, you need to say what you need to tell us an example of what you mean. In a place where there's emphasis on the Holy Spirit power, Holy Spirit grace, Holy Spirit anointing, Holy Spirit gift, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit teaching, focus. Focus on the Spirit, focus on Holy Ghost, talk about Holy Ghost, talk about Holy Ghost impartation, Holy Ghost encounter, Holy Ghost congress, Holy Ghost night, emphasis on the Holy Spirit. But the gospel uh, is, is it, sorry, from, from, from this conversation, they go together, sorry, gospel sorry, and Holy Spirit. Sorry, uh, John, sorry, uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, the gospel according to Zion John, yes, chapter 16 and chapter 15. The Lord Jesus yes. Christ, you, you can give us the, the gospel according to, to, to St. John chapter 16. I think first 13 or so. Maybe first 13 yes. or so, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Uh, yeah. Are we gone? Sir? The Lord Jesus Christ told us what his own Holy Spirit would do when he came. 13, yeah. However, when he, the spirit of truth, come, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of his own. Please, can we have the King James Version, please? Okay. Yes, sir. Just one second. Okay, sir. King James Version. Mm, KJV. Yeah, that's it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Easy, sir. Okay. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. The Holy Spirit, the, the Spirit of Christ, does not speak about himself. So any, so in answer, okay, let, let's read it a little further to the beginning of the verse 14. But he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And we show you things to come. He shall glorify me. He shall glorify me. If you go to chapter 15, yes, sir. if you go to chapter 15, I think verse 26 or so, if I'm not mistaken, 
Okay. You see, yeah. you see, you see virtually the same thing repeated. Let's see if I try this. Yes, sir. Good. Bring it to the end, yes. But when he when the comforter is come, whom I will send is the one the Christ is the one that sends the comforter. Who I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth which proceeds from the Father, he shall testify of me. Mm. So if you if you if you go if you see anywhere, the one way to know that you are in a church of the devil is where you have Holy Ghost Congress, Holy Ghost Assembly, Holy Ghost Administration, Holy Ghost Worship, Holy Ghost Convention. The Holy Ghost. You see, you see, sirs, let me tell you something. The people are using People are using, thank you for bringing us back. People are using the name Holy Ghost. They think that they can use the name of Holy Ghost to override the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible said there's only one name given unto men under heaven by which we can be saved. The only name donated to humanity is the name of the God that came in flesh, the one that shed holy blood to pay for our sins and arose again from the dead. There's no other name given unto men under heaven by which we can be saved. So the people <laughs> who are supposedly praying to the Holy Ghost who, who are supposedly worshiping the Holy Ghost? Who are supposedly glorifying the Holy Ghost? They are doing it unknown to them. Because you see, sir, Christianity is one faith that you cannot mimic. No. It's the only faith that you cannot mimic. Can't. Every attempt to mimic true Christianity is demon, is demon worship. Thank you, sir. Yeah, every attempt to, to mimic true Christianity, you are you are on the broad way. The way is uh, is broad. Broad. Mm. The gate is wide. You can do anything you like in it. No, in Christianity you cannot do anything you like in it. The name of the Lord is the strong tower. The righteous runs into it and is saved. The name of the Lord is Jesus Christ. Mm. The name yes. of the Lord is Jesus Christ. So yes. that is the little answer I can give you, uh, Mr. Paul. Thank you so much. That, yeah. uh, uh, I, I, think, I think let's wrap up this. Uh, it's one hour twenty. Yes, minutes. Uh, no, no, I can see that you are watching the time. I can see that. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, sorry. In one, in one, one minute. If uh, uh, John has something to say, in one minute. Nothing. Okay. okay. How about you, Paul? Um, we just want to continue. Hopefully, by God's grace, this conversation will continue next week. And next week, we'll be looking at um, what well, said something last week, and by the end, that led to this topic. He has said something again today that the worship of God according to the New Testament, because the Old Testament worship had been obliterated. Because of our, of, because of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, we're going to look at some of those. We're going to look at some of those worship that uh, as that is no longer applicable in the in the New Testament. So we're looking at the we're we'll looking at Christ in the Old Testament. How the Aladura apply approach the Old Testament practices and principle, and how the Pentecostals approaches the Old Testament practices and principle. It's a very long one. It's, you can't finish it next week, but we'll start okay. from there. <clears throat> Uh, thank you so much, everybody. And I think at this point, uh, yeah, uh, John, can you pray for us in two minutes, please? All right. Our King, our Lord, we thank you for your grace and the, the privilege you've given to us to know your way, to know your truth. Thank you for saving us and thank you for the spirit 
uh, of liberty that opens our eyes to understand your truth. We pray, O oh Lord Jesus, that you will help us, you will guide our hearts, you will continue to help us to speak the truth with boldness, with wisdom, and with all clarity in the name of Jesus. We pray for everyone listening to this, that may they be, uh, may they be enlightened and may their eyes be opened to know your ways, to know your truth in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, grant them uh, repentance of heart, please. Oh, we, we ask you, O oh Lord, that you will regenerate their heart, open their eyes to understand your truth in the name of Jesus. And may they respond in faith, repentance, and in truth, uh, belief in the true Christ Jesus in the name of Jesus. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. So we'll look at how they revived uh, Shiloh, how they revived uh, 